So many people come to the masjid and ask, tell us, why don't you have a Alhamdulillah, the school has grown in a way that everybody wants to see it grow. What yes. made me enroll at Ibrahim College was the fact that Ibrahim College was unique. Completely. So many different cultures. I've been um, a trustee in Islamic Shastriya Foundation around five years. Yeah, the way that the school is one, I think it's, uh, it's very fresh. My kids to be brought up on an uh, Islamic environment. If I had to bless this, if Allah didn't want it, if Allah wasn't pleased with it, he wouldn't incorporate Islam in all, in all the subjects, whether it's math. As you know, but Munfasil me. For the girls, it, it doesn't make any difference. They we do a whole range of things to engage the local community. Improve our poem from yesterday. Excellent, excellent. Mainstream academic sciences along with the Islamic sciences, it was. And the head uh, mistress of the girl's second. As an independent school, we do have a certain degree of choice with what we teach. Nur Islam is special because it teaches you extra about Islam. They think positively everything and it's really easy to find out which path is right way and which path is wrong way. It was in great demand. So many people come to the masjid and ask, tell us, why don't you have a primary school? The school was set up in 2001, around about 10 years ago now, due to the high demand from the community. Alhamdulillah, Nur Islam Trust started off as a mother and toddlers group and then they uh, opened up a preschool. When the building was bought from uh, an auction house, it was an ex-clinic and we had to develop it to become a fit for purpose building that we wanted to teach our local community children in an Islamic ethos, in an Islamic environment and hence the steering group was set up. During the war years, the uh, Second World War, it used to be a school, but over the years adaptations had been made. So we had to redo uh, some of the uh, building structure, the building uh, entries and exits to cope with the uh, legislation at the time, the fire legislation, the Ofsted requirements, uh, the uh, children's welfare facilities and everything had to be set up from scratch again. And in that way, the local community was quite helpful because this is a school for the local community and for the Muslim uh, people in particular. Uh, they were quite helpful in setting up and giving support. The main reason that we've actually situated ourselves in this building is because of the location. We wanted to be close proximity to, this, to the actual mosque um, so that we have strong links with the mosque. We have children from Ilford, we have children from um, Gants Hill, we have children from further afield and from Hackney. So they're not all from Leighton or Wolven Forest even. Um, so Alhamdulillah, most of our children, I would say probably about 70 to 80 percent of our children are from Leighton or Leighton Stone area, or at least 90 percent are from Wolven Forest and we run about 10 percent from outside of the borough. As soon as the baby is born, they want to get, put the, the baby's name in the preschool, uh, first of all, and then in order for, their, for the child to come to our primary school. So it has got a great impact and people know of Nur Islam, mashallah. I used to live in North London and I wanted to send my daughter um, back in 19, 2000, year 2000, I wanted to send her to a Muslim primary. Um, there was no primary school provision, Muslim primary school provision where I lived. So I used to travel all the way from uh, Muswell Hill up to Leighton to send my daughter because she got a place in the preschool. I was really happy with the preschool and I decided to send her to the primary school. So I've been with the primary school since the year 2003. I've seen the school develop and flourish and blossom into, mashallah, what it is today. And um, my daughter has also really, mashallah, benefited from the fact that it is a Muslim primary school and now she's in year seven in secondary school as well now, mashallah. Any parent that would like their child to attend our school, they'll have to apply. Um, around about three years old, um, a parent would apply when a child becomes three. Um, once the application is in, um, we have a, a we have a, a scoring system, um, and if a child gets into the top 24 of our scoring system, then we invite the parents over for a meeting uh, and an interview as well. If the parents are successful during the interview process and they're happy with the school, then we'll offer them a place, and from there on, 
um, they have a decision whether they would like to accept the place or otherwise. Most, alhamdulillah, most of our parents accept the place and then they start in September. Hello! Hello! I think it's um, very important for a child um, to develop an Islamic culture and environment at a early stage. I mean, Iman has been attending an Islamic school since reception and it's not been this school but it's been somewhere else in the, in the local area and I think for, uh, for Muslims growing up in Great Britain it's very important to give them the right foundation in terms of from an early age and that as, year, as early as um, reception. Initially my daughter used to go to an, um, a girls school and that was only because of the demand of Noel Islam. Um, it's when, I, when we got the call from Noel Islam um, that, you know, after a long waiting list I jumped to the occasion. I wanted to look into Islamic schools and this is my closest one in the borough. So I went on the internet, had a look, uh, spoke to some mums who already had children here who seemed pleased with the school. Um, then made dua and then sent the children here. And they're happy and I think that's the most important thing that I found is that my children are happy to come. We converted to Islam, me and my husband, so from the time we converted to Islam, we want them to be in the environment of the Islamic environment, really. So somebody told us about the school. So that's why we came, we like, we like it. And we decided to just send them to the school. And also because from the time we started, the school has been very good. It's like a family, really. We've been here from the beginning. So um, we really like um, the way how they teach and all this stuff. I want my kids to be brought up on an uh, Islamic environment and this is uh, the school which is near me and it's one of the best schools in this area so I will, my kids were on waiting list and uh, finally I managed to get a place for them which is good. Yeah, the way the school is one I think it's, uh, it's very professional. I was quite surprised I think um, I think there is a tendency, when you talk about an Islamic school, you automatically conjures up images of lots of children sitting, reading from the Quran, rocking backwards and forwards, perhaps kind of the madrasa pictures that you see on the news. And we're not like that at all here, obviously. I mean, uh, when we get visitors, like non-Muslim visitors, they're always quite surprised when they come inside and they see the displays, they come into the classrooms, and, and their reaction is one of like, oh, it's like a, it's a normal school. I like Noor Islam because like, it's got like so many iPads and games that we use in lessons and stuff. I know right, it's so cool. I like going to the school centre for PE because it's a really big hall and we can do it like, we can play loads of games and stuff. I like having balls outside because it's like every break we get to have different games and we get to play with everybody. Golden time is really cool, like you can do anything at that when it's golden time. I think um, most of is fun and I think um, we get to have laptops and I think that's uh, really good. We have so many um, games in our slums. And I like the Eid parties because they're fun and we get to do lots of activities and it's non-uniform and things and as well. And I like the, 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 the computers in the IC2 room and we do fun stuff in ICE. I like the lessons because they're quite interesting and they have lo like loads of fun activities in there. A typical school week for most of our children will be um, Monday to Fridays they have to have one hour of literacy, one hour of numeracy and one hour of Islamic studies. After which um, they have a mixture of art, design, geography, um, food technology, sound technology, um, PE and, and other subjects as well, other national curriculum subjects. The government expect us to um, teach sex education. We have our own curriculum for sex, sex education and we've, we've called it human development. Um, and this is normally taught in year five with the permission of the parent. So rather than teach the national curriculum human development lessons, we've adapted them and teach our own version, if you like. So we, again, so it's more to do with about boys and girls reaching a certain age and relating that to faith. So for example, uh, uh, why they have to make a also and things like that. I think especially the SRE provision, I was very actually quite concerned about, you know, that. But um, when, when the time came for my daughter to have the, the um, education, the SRE education, she, we were actually so involved as parents. We were given the, um, the curriculum, we were given what they were going to be taught 
support. We were invited in for meetings with the teachers that they were going to teach them. Um, we were told, you know, we were told everything that was going to be taught. In Islam, there is no shyness, as the Prophet has mentioned. So whatever field um, we, we try to teach, we try to teach it at the best of our capabilities um, whilst keeping to the Quran and Sunnah. They ensured that the girls were taught by a female teacher, the boys were taught by a male teacher and if we had any questions as parents we were always um, invited to ask the teachers. Some parents may decide that their children are not ready for this and hence they'll teach the child in their own time when they're ready and some parents prefer us to take that role and try to guide the children. Um, in terms of music, there is there is music there, but it's not music like um, as taught in uh, state schools. It's, for example, nasheeds and singing. It's not in terms of you know playing a guitar or a piano or anything like that. We follow most of the national cur curriculum apart from music. Instead of music, we have something called sound technology, which caters for the sound that your mouth. Uh, will make rather than musical instruments. So we try to blend that in with the Quran and Quranic studies as well. So different um, rules in, when we read in the Quran um, we'll have different sounds so we incorporate this in sound technology as well. Alhamdulillah we don't have any major issues um, with teaching this um, because we know the Quran and Sunnah has guided us in, on the right path and wherever we can um, try to educate our children in terms of sex education we will do so but at the correct time when the age is appropriate when they have become when they re when they reach an appropriate age we always have a, a homeschool agreement um, with the parents so that we have our duties listed on the agreement and we sign to say that we will fulfill our duties as best to our abilities and we expect the parents to also make sure their child completes their homework, make sure that they come in with uniform, with the PE kit, the right attitude um, and alhamdulillah we have had no problems with our parents and alhamdulillah our parents are always on our side and with working together with our parents we see that our children are excelling in not just Islamic studies but also the national curriculum and secular education. Our parents are so different to maybe state school parents where most of our parents want to get involved desperately with school trips. Any um, activities we do, we try to invite our parents. Um, any assemblies, we start to invite our parents to assemblies as well. So alhamdulillah, we're trying to get our parents involved as much as possible and our parents are really enthusiastic and they really want to be involved with their child's education, including school trips, lessons, activities, assemblies and many other activities that we do in our school. Our local uh, neighbours, um, our, our relationship is very good. Um, we normally invite them over to any activities that we have. For example, we will have uh, art uh, and design technology exhibitions. They are very kind of hot on community cohesion as well as emphasising the Islamic side of um, education. So I really wanted a school where she wasn't just kind of locked up and this is your Islam, but I wanted a school that was involved in the community as well as um, providing an Islamic education. Because um, we're members of the community here, you know, it makes sense for us to uh, support it in any positive way that we can. Um, like the local hospital, for example, like the maternity ward recently, we did a big push where we raised about £6,000, if I remember rightly. There's always issues in terms of schools have issues with parking um, and there's always these small minor issues, but every school has these issues. Overall, though, I'll say we've got a very good relationship with the LEA. We're always constantly in communication with the LEA. They come over to observe our teachers, to help us, to train our teachers. Uh, and we, we always send our teachers over to training, over to the LEA as well. We try to be as green conscious as possible. Um, recently, we've been awarded Sustainable Travel Outstanding Level Award um, in 2010. So what we've try to promote in our school is making sure that our parents realise we are, we are trying to be as green as possible. We encourage parents to walk to school, we encourage the children to walk to school, um, we try to promote parents avoiding cars, so even if you're not walking to school using public transport, um, we recycling, every single class has a recycling bin, um, so we try to recycle as much as possible as well. Um, we did. Initially, when I first started, I did try to investigate whether we can have solar panels in our school. So we, obviously that would be amazing for our school to be a first uh, green Islamic school as well. But unfortunately, due to government funding being cut um, in, at the end of 2011, that wasn't possible. But alhamdulillah, we do try our best 
to try to be as green as possible and we encourage our parents as well as our children to be aware of how to be green and try to promote being green themselves. Well, I was here from day one. I've seen how, what kind of improvement we have had in, what, 11 years? It has been marvelous working here. And we started from zero. I think we are one of the top schools in, if, if not England, but London, surely, you know. But I really enjoy working here because I love children. I, I come, I open the school, I make sure everything is okay for the children. And then I look after the children mainly and try to keep the school as clean as possible. You know, which I think, I hope we, we are doing, you know. The school is mainly funded by the, the school fees that come in every year. So the £3,000 per child is the main source of funding for our school. If we, um, the initially, when we first opened, the school was also funded by the, the Nurusam Trust, which is um, part of Nurusam Mosque. Um, uh, and alhamdulillah, they... they uh,